We're here today with Wharton Healthcare Management Professor Abby Alpert to talk about some of her recent research. Abby, thanks for being with us. Thank you. So first of all, could you give us a brief summary of what you studied? Uh, so my research is in health economics and public finance, and my recent work has focused on the pharmaceutical market. Uh, so in a recent project, um, I've studied the impacts of direct-to-consumer advertising for prescription drugs on drug utilization and drug adherence. Uh, so we've seen a very dramatic increase in the number of pharmaceutical ads on TV in the last two decades. Um, pharmaceuticals are now one of the largest categories of advertising on TV, and over $4 billion is spent on this type of advertising. Um, and economists have been interested for a long time in understanding the extent to which um, advertising is informative uh, versus persuasive. And pharmaceutical advertising is particularly controversial in this respect, and there has been a lot of debate about its uh, potential effects on patient welfare. So on the one hand, uh, advertising may have informational value if it educates patients about available treatments, um, encourages people to seek care, especially for underdiagnosed conditions. Um, or it may even improve communication between patients and their doctors. Um, for people who are already taking advertised medications, uh, seeing an ad on TV for your drug could serve as a reminder to take your medication, um, or it may even enhance your perception of the benefits of treatment, um, potentially le leading to better drug adherence. Um, on the other hand, uh, drug advertising may also lead to unnecessary overuse of prescription drugs and increased drug spending. And so in this project, uh, we are trying to quantify the extent to which advertising impacts drug utilization, um, and we also explore some of the mechanisms underlying advertising's impacts. And this helps us to try to understand um, some of the health and welfare implications of advertising. So to do this, um, we use a natural experiment design, uh, which helps us get at the causal effects of advertising. And our natural experiment is uh, the introduction of Medicare Part D in 2006. Uh, so using data from the Nielsen Corporation, we find uh, that there was a sharp increase in pharmaceutical advertising immediately following the introduction of Part D, and um, that this advertising was targeted to markets uh, with the highest concentration of elderly. So places like West Palm Beach, Florida, for example. Um, we also find that this advertising spilled over onto younger consumers in these markets, even though it was targeted to the older consumers, in that they also experienced increased exposure to drug ads after Part D. And so this sets the stage for our research design, um, because what we do is compare drug advertising before and after Part D across geographic areas with a higher or lower concentration of elderly. Um, and then we use this change in advertising exposure due to Part D uh, to estimate its effects on drug utilization uh, for the non-elderly, so people who are under age 65 and not eligible for Medicare. Um, and we focus on the non-elderly population in order to isolate the effects of advertising on drug utilization from the direct effects of the Part D program. So to give a simple example, um, our strategy uh, basically boils down to a comparison across areas like West Palm Beach, Florida, with a large elderly population, and areas like Denver with a much younger population population. So young people living in West Palm Beach are going to be exposed to a larger increase in drug advertising after party relative to their peers living in Denver. And then we test whether this also leads uh, to a differential increase in drug use. And our data on drug utilization comes from a very large database of insurance claims, uh, which covers a wide variety of geographic areas. Great. So after looking at this, what were some of your key takeaways? I mean, where did you have a bunch of young people in West Palm Beach wanting to <laughs> like take, I don't know, a heart medication or like stuff that older people would take? Or I mean, what, what did you find? So we find substantial effects of advertising on drug utilization. We estimate that a 10% in advertising exposure uh, would increase the number of prescriptions purchased by about 5%. About 70% of this effect is driven by increased um, new initiation, uh, and the other 30% is due to increased drug use among existing patients. So in other words, increased drug adherence. Um, and specifically 
specifically, uh, we find that a 10% increase in advertising would uh, increase the rate of drug adherence by about 1 to 2%. Um, so while advertising increases drug adherence among existing patients, uh, we also find that among uh, people who initiate treatment uh, because of advertising, their compliance with treatment is actually lower on average. And so this is a concern um, if advertising is capturing uh, people for whom treatment is marginally less appropriate um, or for people who are simply less attached to treatment because uh, initiating a treatment without complying with it um, will lead to increased drug spending uh, without very many gains to health. Um, also, uh, another finding uh, we have is that um, there was a large uh, spillover effect of advertising on non-advertised drugs within the same drug classes. Uh, so these non-advertised drugs are typically generics um, or off-patent brands. Um, and the idea here is that uh, someone sees an ad on TV for Lipitor, asks their doctor for Lipitor, but then gets prescribed another statin or a generic drug. And so what we're finding is that advertising expands um, utilization for entire classes of drugs. So could you talk to us a little bit about the practical implications of this paper? I mean, I could see it having pretty broad ones just because it involves both prescription drug companies and doctors and then also even patients who are seeing this stuff on TV. So pharmaceutical advertising has been in the news a lot lately um, because the American Medical Association recently called for a ban on all direct-to-consumer advertising for prescription drugs. Um, the U.S. is actually only one of two countries in the world that allows this type of advertising. And they argue um, that drug advertising leads people to substitute away from low-cost generic drugs towards more expensive brands, even when they're not appropriate. And so our research can help to inform this debate. Um, while our findings show that advertising does indeed increase drug spending, uh, we also find uh, that advertising may have health benefits because it increases drug adherence and also increases the take-up of important drugs for treatments like high cholesterol, hypertension, uh, depression, and others, although um, we can't exactly uh, and fully tease out um, appropriate versus inappropriate use in our study. Um, more concerning, though, is that we find that people who initiate drug treatment because of advertising um, are, on average, less compliant with treatment. And so this could mitigate some of these health gains. Uh, we also find that a significant share of the increase in drug utilization driven by advertising is actually for non-advertised drugs, uh, which tend to be lower cost generics um, and off-patent brands. Another implication of this research is that we find that there were um, very large spillover effects of Medicare Part D on the non-elderly population outside of the Medicare program. And these effects are large um, and important on their own and may warrant some consideration by policymakers. I guess what I was wondering is, I mean, the idea if you're saying that people who see these ads, I mean, they may, it may bring them to the doctor, but it also might mean that they're less compliant than someone that came another way. I guess, what implications does this have for like how physicians should maybe treat patients that have seen this because of an ad, if they, if they know? I mean, is it sort of give, a, give tips about how they might be able to mitigate some of those negative impacts that you found? Right, so we find that people who are initiating treatment because of advertising are less adherent. And so doctors should be potentially aware that people who are coming in asking for a treatment um, may not be as uh, as eligible for that treatment um, or as likely to comply with it um, and may require more monitoring um, and more assessment of whether that treatment is appropriate for them uh, compared to someone who, who the doctor would decide um, needed this treatment. And what, what's next for this research, or what are you going to look at next? So our current findings uh, show very detailed um, picture of the utilization responses to advertising. And I think uh, the next thing that I'm interested in pursuing is to use our research design um, to analyze the effects of advertising on health more directly, as well as isolating appropriate versus inappropriate use. Um, to do this requires detailed data on health outcomes, data on mortality, and also uh, data on more intermediate outcomes like hospitalizations or other clinical outcomes. Uh, but I think that really the ultimate test of whether pharmaceutical advertising improves welfare is, is its effects on health directly. And um, currently, there's very little evidence on advertising's effects on health. And I think this is an important area for future research. Abby, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you.